Intelligence. Energizing your email marketing with Kate Barrett. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Intelligence Creative Review. I'm Kate Barrett, the founder of eFocus Marketing, a specialist email marketing agency helping companies to use email more intelligently. And I'm Elliot Ross, I'm CEO at Taxi for Email, which is a tool that helps everyone on the email marketing team make better email. Today for our creative review, we're going to be looking at an event marketing example from FarmDrop. So FarmDrop source fresh farm produce and deliver it direct to your door. Therefore, they're selling products. Let me show you the email before I jump into our little description here. So this is a really great example of an event driven piece of content. So timing your content of your emails around events that happen throughout the year is a really great way to keep it fresh and relevant whilst giving you a slightly different way to distill your content and advertise your products and services that link into that event. So FarmDrop have obviously a, a finite number of products that they have. This is a great way to mix it up and show multiple products sold as a bundle so they've put them together to create bundles that you can buy for pancake day something a little bit different so they've done it for pancake day but of course you can do it for christmas easter school holidays back to school black friday cyber monday mother's day father's day and don't forget that with those emotional type of events, we've seen some of these examples start to come through where companies are offering you the opportunity to opt out of certain notifications while staying subscribed to other communications. On Black Friday and Cyber Monday, sometimes we see it as the opposite, where you can opt in to be the first to know or that you want to be on the list to receive all of the Black Friday and Cyber Monday offers, rather than perhaps just a summary or a normal amount of emails about those times. So think about how you can ask people to opt in or opt out of certain types of information depending on what you are communicating about, we've got to remember to bring that human element into our email marketing and think about the people receiving our emails, especially when we're using real life timing and events. Now, we've all seen this in the past few weeks, right? So with COVID-19, we've all seen a lot of emails coming through and we've specifically chosen not to do a COVID-19 email for this end of March roundup. But this is the perfect example of pivoting your strategy, pivoting your content around what's going on right now and how people may feel about it. So Elliot, what are your thoughts about how you can change your content, change your strategy and how we need to do that, not just now when we've got a pandemic and a, a global emergency going on, but just generally for different types of event-based communications. What are your thoughts? Um, I think it's a, a mixture of things. So there's, you know, often um, marketers, we have this kind of idea of like we email once a month or we email once a fortnight or whatever. Um, and quite often we're saying broadly the, the same sort of things. So tying in with different events is a good way to be able to put a new spin on a similar kind of message. Um, so what they're doing here with Pancake Day is great because they're finding a new way to basically say, you know, our service is about sending you the ingredients that you'd need to do to put a meal together. Um, and also there's an element of kind of education stuff on here as well. You know, it might be that you don't know how to make pancakes or, you know, you don't know what ingredients you need or whatever. So it's a good way to sort of get almost as a reminder, like, here's what you need to know and, and here's how to get stuff going. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the sort of second part there, I think you have to make sure that you do it where it's relevant and it's not really contrived. So it works really well for them because it's in context, whereas quite often you kind of see marketing advice as kind of take world emoji day and make it about your brand and it doesn't work because it, of course it wouldn't, you know. Yeah, I think that's great advice. You have to have everything that's going to work in context for your business. Um, you know, so if it was, I don't even know what all of the world days out there, but you know, world pink skirt day, that probably wouldn't work for farm drop. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, there are there's a list, a list of these days, but there is basically one a day, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. more than one a day. Yeah. And, you know, or a week or a month or whatever. Excellent. So before we move into talking a little bit more about the the content and the design of this email, just to flag up a couple of things in terms of how they're sending this email. So tick, they're using a a subdomain, so email.farmdrop.com. So that means it keeps that domain reputation away from their main farmdrop.com domain because we know that domain reputation is holistic around the internet. So when you are sending your emails, make sure you're doing it from a separate domain or a separate subdomain from your your main uh, company URLs that keeps it away from your website keeps it away from your one-to-one company emails as well we don't want any kind of negative impact filtering back through to there so that's that's obviously something they're doing well there they've got TLS encryption um, enabled on their emails so again another good thing and this was actually part of a couple of emails from farm drop around the same time so this one is last chance to get your free pancake bundle so in terms of uh, subject line techniques they're obviously giving you a little bit of FOMO a little bit of fear of missing out that it's your last chance to get that free pancake bundle and they are being explicit in the subject line that that's what it is that they're advertising it is about selling their products selling that pancake bundle so a couple of different techniques that they've used in the subject line there that I just wanted to, to call out But just looking at the content and looking at it on a a mobile device, we can see that the content stacks one under the other. And I know this is something that we've talked about before. So Elliot, do you wanna pick up on a a couple of things we've said before, but just to recap on mobile design for everybody listening? Yeah, so on the desktop version, they've got this kind of S-shaped layout, which is is great because it, um, it, it makes the email a bit more appealing when you're looking at it. So it's kind of, the first sort of chunk of content there, you've got image and then the text is on the right and then the bit underneath, they've got um, the text on the left and then the image on the right. So it's a sort of zigzag sort of view. Um, When you come to make that work on mobile, basically the challenge you have is when we stack stuff on mobile, you basically take the second bit and put it underneath the first. So you'd have image and then text underneath um, for the first module and that's great but when it comes to the second module you'd end up with text and then image underneath so it would look a bit weird when they're all kind of stacked into modules on mobile um, so the way around that is there's basically a, a sort of code technique you can do to make sure that the second bit stacks above instead of below um, it makes the code a little bit more involved and it's something that you need to sort of dig into um, but it's a nice touch that they've managed to do it here yeah, and what I really love is that they've they've used that S-shaped design, like you say, on the, the desktop webmail version, um, and it works perfectly when they do stack it. And because they've used that green background on each of the individual offer sections, so in the secondary content area, they've got the primary content area at the top with the, the menu, the image, the headline, and the main kind of proposition. And then in the secondary content area where they've got the S-shaped design or it stacks on a mobile, We've got the green background on each section to clearly lay out with the white gap in the middle each of the three different bundles that they're selling. I think that works really well with the imagery. Then we've got a subheading there, the main offer that they're giving and what's included in that bundle. And then a really cool call to action as well. I love the the wording that they've used on the button. So they've brought the button text in line with what the offer is and they've actually delivered the offer code in the call to action button. I love that as an idea. Yeah, it'd be a nice touch as well as if you click through, that automatically populates in the sort of relevant field on the site. Um, sometimes that's technically difficult to do, but others, depends on what you can do on the website, really. Um, yeah, your point about colour, though, is interesting. So, you know, this is a, a sort of averagely length-wise email, I suppose. You know, there's sort of four blocks of content there. Um, but being able to differentiate each bit with a sort of block of colour means that it doesn't look overwhelming when you see the email, like it's quite easy to kind of scroll through and see that these are different sections rather than one big chunk of content. 
definitely makes it really easy to read. And then having the different sizes for the text does that as well. So you've got your big text in your, your font at the top for the main heading, which backs up the subject line as well. Then you come in and your, your body copy is smaller than your headlines and your subheadings. Um, and then your call to action button size is kind of somewhere in the middle. So it really works to draw your eye down the content and it's that inverted triangle. So you're drawing them from your, your headlines and your subheadings through your main content down to that call to action and in every single section of this email they do that really well yeah yeah they've done they've done it really well it's a nice nice kind of balance of a fair chunk of content but done in a sort of not overwhelming way yeah, and really importantly, if those images were turned off and they are lovely images, they're very Instagram worthy type setup images and they're lovely, but they back up the content, they're not the content. So if those images didn't show, were removed by default, which still happens in a lot of uh, webmail or desktop email clients, or if you're on a mobile device, you've got bad signal and they don't load, you can still see every single piece of content and what they want you to do where you go next to redeem that offer and what the offer is without those images being there so they back up the copy they don't en encompass the whole copy which is really great in terms of design and I think you know sometimes we need to just keep it simple keep it easy to read and lead people through to where we want to go sometimes we can get a little bit too complicated and fancy and try and bring print design or you know bring kind of website design into our emails and we have to understand that the way that people engage with our emails is different the way that we view those emails is different so by all means get fancy but make sure that it's easy to read and follow what you want people to do what I also love is that we've got a call to action for each section. So that takes you through to buy each of those bundles. Now, what I saw um, somebody doing previously, which I thought was a really great idea, was dynamically changing the offer code to have somebody's name in it and from their results and of course it may work differently for you but it's a really great place to start with a, a testing hypothesis is that it increased the number of times that code was used by personalizing it with their name so although I, I absolutely love what FarmDrop have done here with the different codes for the different uh, types of bundle that they've got. Something for you thinking about using offer codes in your email, maybe try personalizing it, dynamically personalizing it. If again, you've got an e-commerce platform that would allow you to have dynamically personalized codes and see what that does against a standard code that's used for everybody and see what your retention rates are, your um, see what your conversion rates are from that as well. Yeah, that's an interesting little detail because it's something that we quite often don't really think about. Um, so being able to tie the discount code to a specific person um, means that um, you know you can do that attribution. You can see that this person received an email on this date, and therefore they, even if they didn't click through to purchase, they just copied it out of the email and they came back later um, through other means. You can tie that back to them receiving the email, um, but also it can be a sort of subtle way to underline for the sort of recipient that this is an offer specifically for you. Um, so I guess one other approach is even if you send um, the same code to everyone, you can make it look like a unique code that doesn't make any sense, you know, sort of a hash of numbers and letters or something. Even if everyone gets the same one, um, people might sort of think that it's still a unique one to them. Yeah, great point. So a relatively simple email today, but one that I think is really effective. And that's why we wanted to pull it out as an example for you today. So Elliot, any final thoughts that you wanted to share on this creative? Uh, not really. I think that's a, the sort of challenge with these sorts of emails is making sure you see them ahead of time. Because really, once the sort of wider world starts talking about whatever event it is, that you're trying to get an email to align with, it's, it's usually a little too late in terms of production timings and things like that. So um, the trick to getting this sort of stuff done is to be ahead of time, get yourself a calendar and work out 
exactly you know what what is on the horizon for the next three months or six months so that you can get your content for Pancake, Pancake Day or Valentine's Day or whatever it is um, you can get that going ahead of time before you see it in the sort of real world definitely I think that's a, a great tip and the only other thing that I would add is depending on what the purpose of the email is I perhaps would have put a general call to action in that top section so where you've got your headline and your body content at the top of the email that you can see there I perhaps would have put a you know a shop all bundles kind of call to action up there again something you can test as to whether or not that catch all versus the individual works i still would have had the individual ones in there for each bundle absolutely perhaps just a general one for them to go through to the website and see other bundles as well would have been a, a good addition there but something to test wouldn't necessarily have worked and i think having those specific call to actions is always better but sometimes people like to go and have a, a little browse as well. So that's my final thought on, on this email. And that's it for this month's Intelligence Creative Review. I hope you found it useful. If you want to submit an email for us to review, drop me an email to kate at e-focusmarketing.com. And don't forget to go and check out our brand new website from eFocus Marketing, emaildesignguru.com where we're going to be providing lots of email marketing inspiration for you from creatives to content examples sign up forms unsubscribe processes automated campaigns preference centers and much more all related to email marketing so if you've got a great example or you want to submit something that your business is doing that you're really proud of or you've just seen something around that you think wow I really like that and you've got a reason why you like it hit on the submit an example button on the website and get in touch with us and don't forget you can always listen on the go to the full intelligence podcast head over to e-focusmarketing.com forward slash intelligence where you'll find the links to listen to all of our episodes or you can find us on itunes spotify or whichever your preferred podcast provider is and don't forget to head over to youtube where you can find more from taxi for email and e-focus marketing with our monthly creative reviews thanks for watching today and elliot and i will see you next month for another email marketing creative review. Thanks everyone.